like that. Hit his area with 51. Everything in the butterflies. Go get your man. And I feel like butterfly gonna be captain. So all y'all really know what happened. I'm gonna tell you what happened. He got smoked. Gotta get my cake up, a lot of shit be going down. Gotta keep my head up. Looking in the mirror, all I see is the king. Do you remember what it is, man? Salute to the subscribers. That notification, gang, etc., etc. Don't let none of that get too far ahead of you. You know who I be. Follow me on IG, Vada underscore fly. Tell your mama I said hi. Salute to my guy, Showtime SP. He will be back in the building pretty soon to do the things that we do. Shout out to all the leagues, the battlers. Everything, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My birthday was this week. Salute to everybody who reached out, everybody who sent me a cash app for some lunch money, gave me a shout out, whatever the case may be. It's been a lot going on in battle rap this week. I definitely want to talk about the Kid Slave versus Shotgun Shook, who I felt like won. I mean, we may recap a couple other battles on this platform. Uh, I seen all of the news, I heard all of the chatter, but like I said, I was it's my birthday. I'm not going to be entrenched in battle rap. 24 hours a day, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, I got better shit to do. But uh, at the time, so uh, Beasley had an interview with Jay Black. I know people was like, oh, did you watch it? Did you see it? I saw, I heard a lot of what went on. I heard the premise of his conversation. I know y'all be thinking, he hates him, nigga. I don't hate nobody. I do what I do. They do what they do. Everybody's doing their thing, but I know the chatter and battle rap, you know what I'm saying? Beasley addressed a lot of the issues that were going on as far as with Easy the Black Captain. He talked about the NBS dude, asked him to put the content out, put the audio out, and wanted to put money on this shit too. And I don't blame him for doing that because I will say this about Beasley. And I'm not saying I know him greatly. I'm not saying that we be buddy buddy and shit like that. But in the past, from knowing him, the things that he was accused of, I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think the nigga really got no proof that that shit happened. I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, I spoke to the dude, I tried to, you know, what you gonna do, what you gonna prove? He's like, oh, I got it, I got it, I got it. Until he proves that shit, I don't believe it. I'm gonna just be honest with you. He got away with it, but he ain't get away with it. So I, that's that's the end of that. Um, He spoke about the app battles, the content on there, about the media, they recapped the app battles. Well, I recapped more app battles than anyone. And I'm gonna recap another app battle. The reason why is because the people that we like to see are there. Like, if I don't recap, that's see the thing is, if I don't recap app battles, or if I don't highlight them with Showtime SP, how the fuck is anybody gonna see them? They know us for recaps. They know other people for recaps. Nobody's ever gonna see this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I had Jazz the Rapper saying nobody even knew she battled in the last couple years. You have other people that saying they don't get no visibility. And the thing is that what a lot of people don't mention is the artists be hitting us up to get recaps on their battles. We don't recap all these niggas. They hit us up. Please, bro, we'll do, we'll do. They're not gonna tell you that they asked us to do it, but they do because if we don't recap it, there, there it is what it is. Um. Shotgun Shug versus Kid Slade. And also salute to everybody that's involved in that process. You know what I'm saying? Jay Black Beasley, the interview. I think it was very informative and people needed to hear it. But let's get into this. Kid Slade versus Shotgun Shug. Um, I did get to watch this battle. I did get to, uh, you know, give really a good glimpse at what I thought was going to happen. Because Kid Slade, uh, quite obviously, he's battling the Shotgun Shug. And then this is his first battle back since Tay Rock released the paperwork about Kid Slave making a statement. Y'all snitching, statement, talk, whatever the case may be. The paperwork came out, everybody saw it. it, it covered, it was in battle rap for a while. This is another battle that dropped on the app. And guess what, the bloggers talked about it and helped bring it to the light. So, he's battling against Shotgun Shook. And Shotgun Shook had a crazy run last year, you know what I'm saying? He had a lot of good battles, no, not a lot of chokes. You know, big powerful moments, battle a verb, money on the floor, things like that. And he comes into a battle with Kid Slade that a lot of people told him he should not take. I spoke to Shotgun Shug on the phone after he accepted this battle and they were wilding on him on Twitter. Shotgun Shug said, and I quote, um, you know, I, I, I'm taking this battle to, to prove a point. I got to get him out of here, et cetera, et cetera, because 
Kid Slade was on the URL roster. He was going to get booked regardless. The man is on a contract. They were going to book him. They put a lot of money into him. The Tay Rock battle cost money. And the other 10 battles that he was 10 and 0 on the app cost money. These niggas is about wins. They need, they're trying to develop stars. And you just say easy to block Captain Lee. I'll talk about that towards the end. But if you name the top five, top nine, top 10 guys that are newer on URL, none of them is better than easy to block Captain. So I'll talk about that at the end. But let's, let's get to this. So, um, he comes into this battle, and I was really trying to see how the crowd was going to receive him, how was his bars going to hit, whether it was going to be the same love, same admiration, or was they going to be heckling him, would they be talking, a lot of things that went on in this. So, Shotgun Shook's first round, I'll be honest, Shotgun Shook's first round of the battle, to me, is probably one of the best rounds of the battle altogether. Let's just go there. Um, and ov overall... I'm going to say the resolution of it, I'm going to be honest, it was cool, but it wasn't nothing that was going to like get my camera on. This has been out on the internet, I mean, it's been on the app for like three days, and I'm finally recording, recapping it. Y'all know me, if something's fire, we be done recapping the same SP, you need to get here now. There's mad battles on there, joint that we haven't even recapped. I've watched some, and I'm going to be honest, some of them, it's cool, but others, I was just like, eh, whatever. You know, watching it in bed, fell asleep watching. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like that. The shit, some of the shit wasn't exciting, but that's another story. Shotgun Shook comes out in his first round. He's heating up. He's dropping bombs. You know, he's got some really good lines in there. I knew he was going to go with the snitch thing. You know what I'm saying? He was talking about the snitch, this, snitch, that. Uh, and he had a fire line towards the end of his round. Uh, he was in the field like the NFL players in the field, mic'd up. I thought that was fire. The way he ended his round, I ain't going to give up nobody from Hartford, but I give you some niggas from Stumbles Block. Y'all know I love Paid in Full. That's one of my favorite movies. Go find that man. Don't come back to you. Find that man B. Wilder all throughout his first round. Kid Slade's first round, uh, he took like the first two minutes I had watched. It was from the 12, like, 01 mark. So like the 1405 mark, you see, I, I'm doing the analytics, I'm watching this to explain the situation about the telling, I've been here, I've been there, I've been locked up, I took other people's gun charge and for all of that, like he was just basically, he drug it out for like damn near two minutes of what he was trying to explain and it was received moderately there wasn't going crazy but it was just like a story that he was telling like he'd been locked up he did this he never told on nobody yada 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 i was subpoenaed from a cell and they put my name in them state that it was a long it was just it was all right but it wasn't nothing crazy he gets to a fire line shotgun in the window like a hillbilly they started reacting uh the, the go start a GoFundMe for a nigga they got they can't go find. I thought that was fire. Have a nigga slide down a flag like Jackie Chan, you know, sliding down with the flag. I thought that shit was fire. Uh, he said, uh, wild dope, even dirty the rice like Zataran. You know, Zataran is the dirty rice. It's actually fire. They got some in the microwave over bag you put it in the refrigerator. Like if you're having taco night, you could put the Zatarans in there. You microwave it up. It'd be really good. You snap it open, you pour it in there. Amazing. So I love that line. Uh, Silence on the thing sound like a Tesla revving up. Just be honest, Kid Slade first round was just I. I mean, I didn't go crazy over it. I felt like Shotgun should won the first round clearly. Like I just felt like Kid Slade took too long to get to the point in his first round. And the reason why I did like like I deducted a little bit is because if he wasn't in this situation with all these allegations and shit like that, he wouldn't have had to use a two-minute segment of his round to preface it and fucking give a, a thesis on what had happened. So I felt like that took away from his round. Because when he got to the lines, the punchline, the shotgun in the window like a hillbilly, fucking fire. Uh, the slide down on the flag like Jackie Chan. These are the things that got him to the 10 and 0 mark that he was on on the app. He was running. But having to explain that in a round, it took away from it. I got him, um, Suge 1 uh, Second round, Suge. Uh, you know, you broke the code of silence, the motherfucking code of silence. Then he talked about him telling, he said, you was already in jail. You said you got subpoenaed from a cell. You was already in jail. What was they going to do? Send you back to jail? The crowd started reacting. Oh, um, he says, uh, oh, and then in Shotgun Shook's first round, he had a line about me. He said, Rod, Vada tweeted, put him in more pain than Rod Wave. That was a tweet that I said. And he had another one, um, Shotgun, uh, boot the door like sidekick like Vada. He had a couple lines about me. Shout out to Shotgun Shook. That's my guy. But anyway, back anyway, so Shotgun Shook's second round, he starts talking about the code of silence. He was in jail. He said, I thought you was a sportscaster the way you gave it up play by play. Uh, he had another fire one sitting in court like, yes, ma'am, smack this your new gunner. 
He said, your name in an affidavit, so now we after David. Clever. Um, he said, uh, when you was, when he said you was pointing like Uncle Sam, you gave somebody else Uncle Tom, like Uncle Tom, Uncle Sam. I love to play on words, it was dope. Uh, he said, fucking snitch, only street rule, street rule I broke was never trust a bitch like that. I'm so loyal, I'm sacrificing my integrity just to get the message to you. He was talking to Smack, saying that him even battling Slade is a question against his integrity. Uh, shotgun, um, shotgun shook second round was serviceable. His first round was way better. He had some moments in the second round. He was still heating up and cooking. He was on par. His first round was really fire, though. Slade's second round, he had another... Start where he's just explaining this shit again. Like, Slay, you can't start every round explaining this shit and explaining this and explaining that. Like, in battle rap, you gotta know niggas either gonna fuck with you or they not gonna fuck with you. That's the end of it. Like, all this explaining and I did this and I did that. He had another start like that. And then he had a fire line. My soldiers gonna play their position no matter what. Like, the army soldiers, they in the position no matter. They always gonna play their position no matter what. But it was a little choppy to start, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, still got my white girl. Crush and it's not Topanga, cock the banger. Like I like when he starts getting into those pockets of flows. Uh, bust the whole family, but you're not a Laker. You know, you had to still got my white girl crush, it's not Topanga. Bust the whole damn family, you are not a Laker. And then he had a fire line. You, you, uh, you better double, he said, you better double check with your cousin Shaq, because I don't think the general sell life insurance. Love that line. Uh, he said, 50 for 500, I mean, 50 for 100. I took more food stamps than Brett Favre. That was fire. But then right after he says the line, I hear somebody like, whether well, it was Shug or somebody in the back. Nobody believe it. Nobody believe it. It's not believable. Like, that's the heckling that he's getting now. Those lines that he used to say before that would get a crazy amount of reaction or that he would win rounds with is now getting met by, it's not believable. You can listen to it. Hear the audio, man. Hear the audio, Claudio. I'm not playing with you. Uh... The Fett got the, the same complexion as Pat Mahomes. I like that. See my first brick and got blinded by that powder like blood sport. I fucked with that line. I ain't gonna host the blood sport powder. Uh, he said through the, everything through the scope looked like Game Boy 1. I liked it. Uh, dunk all you want because the death. He said when you die, you could dunk all you want because the death regulation is six feet. I liked it. Uh, very, very good. Second round by Slate. Nunu was hella biased all throughout the battle, but we know, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Uh, but, uh, damn, uh, he said, uh, so Shotgun Shook starts his, uh, his third. I'm going to the third round, you know what I'm saying? I'll just give you the winner of the battle once I'm done with this. Uh, he said, damn, there he goes snitching again, because he was telling the story when, when, when Kid Slate started out his second round telling another story. Uh, Shook starts his round by saying, you know, he was on 15 minutes of fame. He was telling this. You try to blame this person and that. Damn, there he go telling again. Shotgun Shook talked about the situation after the battle where they was at the hotel. The fight didn't happen, etc., etc. He said, you ain't want them problems. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, he said, uh, he said, you ain't want them problems with rock like Flavor Flav. Uh, he said, you fucking pointing. He was like, uh, Shook said, you, uh, you fucking pointing in the camp. Oh, that Pat Bev line. That was the thing. He had the Pat Bev line. He said, uh, he said, you fucking... You foul, oh, you foul King pointing in the camera like Pat Bev, and a lot more of you ratted, you ratted. Slay's third round, he comes out. Taco Bell, Long John Silver. Yeah, I usually get my fish from the Mexicans. You know, Taco Bell, Long John Silver in the same restaurant, get my fish, Mexicans. Fire line, fire setup. Uh, he had another line uh, that ripped through tissue and got some shit on my finger. It was cool, but I don't like shit on my finger. Hey, that's just me. He said, I ain't saying you in the field. I'm just saying you grabbed that flag because you were scared of a little contact. Like that line. Clean shotgun with a stick. Uh, uh, you get buried in a coop. Every casket is a two door because you know two doors on the casket. 50 cal in your face look like a can of Pringles. Fire. Uh, we don't know what's coming out of shotgun. It's a read option. Like that. Then he said I will fuck shotgun up like a high snap. A little bit of a choppy end. Then he had a fire line. Only paperwork I put niggas away on was obituaries. I like that. He addressed putting niggas away on paperwork with obituaries. Um, overall, I got Shotgun Shug 2-1, first and second. Uh, if Slade, if I like the way that Slade ended his third, I could edge him to third. But um, it's not even about the battle. It's about the after. Like, what? how is he going to progress and move? Because Slade was like up here, like an MVP battle with the tournament, winning the Crucible. Uh, wilding on niggas. He was up here as far as like moving up. 
This battle didn't do much for him. Let me be honest with you. I looked on the app. They have him at now 10 and now 1. They're, they're counting this battle as a loss. Now, there may be people who feel like he won, etc., etc. I'm cool with that. But the app stats, they have Suge winning every single round as far as the reactions go. They have uh, Suge winning the first. Uh, they got him winning the first, the second, and the third as far as the reactions go. You know what I'm saying? And uh, 20, 29,000 to 11,000, 16,000, 15,000, 13,000 to 12,000. So it's close in the second and third, but they have Suge winning every round. The comments are all littered with rat emojis. Rat, 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 rat. You can't even look at the comments while the battle is going on. You just have to watch it and analyze it from that perspective because the fans, a lot of them are trolling and a lot of them are going in on him. Um, but congratulations to Shotgun Suge and uh, congratulations to... Um, you know, kiss lady. They're gonna have you on URL. Keep doing your thing. Uh, as far as easy to block captain goes, you know, I'm seeing he's giving his side of the story. I see people going back and forth about the YouTube drops, YouTube drops, whatever the case may be. Uh, I see people saying, you know, Beasley was offering people to take less money for a YouTube drop. I think that's bullshit. Like, if I'm on the company, I'm putting in work, I'm busting my ass, I'm winning 13, 14, 12 battles in a row. I shouldn't have to take half the money or less than money to get a damn YouTube drop. Like, is it that serious? And now I see they put. Danny Myers versus Charlie Clips, but one round out. This is the shit we've been talking about for years. I don't understand why I had to get to this to get to that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I don't think Easy to Block Captain was worth Lou Earl losing. You guys are looking for superstars. There is no real superstars coming out of these new niggas right now. You know, Geechee was a big star. Twerk has had ups and downs, but they're star quality. After that, Easy to Block Captain is it. I don't give a damn if you name 13 of them niggas. They probably don't add up to Easy to Block Captain. I'm sorry. And another bigger artist that's a star or moving up or moving into them ranks is A-Ward. He's doing better than a lot of the artists on the app, and he's never been on it. He just ripped down a crowd of over a 1,000 in New York, you know? So I, if I feel like this, I'm just leave it here when it comes to Easy. If a YouTube drop was all it took to keep this nigga in line, I'd have gave this nigga two YouTube drops because this nigga, he's, he's, he's leading the ship right now. He got the chest battle, they going crazy, the body after body when the coke starts shape shifting. You ain't have to put that out. But you could have gave a nigga Don Marino, Danny Cortez, T Top, one of them shits from two, three years ago. Y'all definitely could have did that. And if other people on the roster would have been mad, it would have been just their problem. They don't treat Ja Morant like they're gonna treat the 15th man on the roster. If the 15th man on the roster gets caught with a gun, he's getting kicked the fuck off the team. Ja Morant, they're gonna work with you, yada, 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 that was your superstar. I don't feel like you should lose a superstar over something so minuscule, you know what I'm saying? And now, you know there's a term, I've heard it from many places, and I heard it most recently from Chris Ambaya, shout out to him, but I'm going to be utilizing that. An enemy of an enemy is my friend. So if you don't like him and he don't like them, they will go there to make that situation over there better. I heard Hitman Holler would take less money to battle somewhere else just to give the energy to Chrome and make y'all look the way that y'all looking right now. I'm just saying it is what it is. I call it like I call it so I can't spoil it. If you love what you're saying, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay in tune with all the latest content. And I'm out. Gang. Gotta get my cake up, a lot of shit be going down Gotta keep my head up, looking